Chucky. And I'm your friend to the end. Heidi fucking ho. Ha, ha, ha. And welcome back to Chucky Queers. It's our weekly coverage of Don Mancini's sci-fi show. And I'm Joe. And I'm Trace, and we are discussing the mid-season finale, season three, episode four, Dressed to Kill. And I gotta say, I had fun with this one. I think as a mid-season finale, I do think this works. Yeah, I I knew that you had enjoyed it because you messaged me, and I mostly felt the same. I think it's fun. Again, I think it's a little bit slight. I don't know if I was just hoping for something a little bit more substantial, but when the episode ended, I was like, that was kind of fun. Where did we move in terms of narrative progression? Not very I far. I feel like, and this is not me like clapping back at you, but I feel like that's a complaint you do have a lot of, of these episodes of Chucky. And again, I know we talked about it before, you know, oh, like episodic, like, you know, you can't really get the full picture until you watch the whole season. Mm-hmm. Um, I do understand where you're coming from. I guess maybe I'm also being more lenient because I don't know if this was the original decision. It does seem like a strike affected decision. So I'm right. kind of like, they did what they could to make this feel like a proper, like, ending or like a cl- it's kind of a cliffhanger i guess i mean the cliffhanger just being that chucky's curse didn't work so right. where do we go from here <laughs> yeah yeah um i think those are all fair points i do think this is the challenge that i regularly have with episodic recaps because you're taking a single hour of television out of context for where it's intended to go but i mean overall this this was fun mm-hmm. i mean it, it's apparently really easy to get into the white house so darn easy well i mean (laughs) admittedly we have cozied up to one of the first sons so i imagine grant has a certain amount of pull i will say i'm um, the critique i will offer is this does feel overstuffed if only because and look i like the jennifer tilly stuff in this episode Mm -hmm. but because the whole thing was kind of centered around like this halloween party every time we got back to her i was like oh this feels very separate i like watching it but it is taking away from our central trio Hmm. Okay, so where do you want to start? Do you want to focus on the White House stuff or the Jennifer Tilly of it all? You know, the Jennifer Tilly of it all is probably the slightest. Um, so why don't we start there and then we can do the actual like plot related stuff. Okay, so um, yes, we didn't anticipate we would be seeing more Jennifer Tilly. I was wrong. <laughs> Here she is. Yeah, so we watch her as she goes to maximum security prison. She's going to be Killed by lethal injection in three weeks. In three weeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't that think is... that's how it works, but may- no. maybe, I mean, look, I am from Texas. Admittedly, I am not a lawyer. I don't think you can execute someone in three weeks, but that's mm-hmm. just me. <laughs> no, I think she'd probably spend a couple of years on death row, but it's fine. So she is introduced to guard Erica Dorset, who is not going to take any of her shit, but is also barely an obstacle for Tiffany, as she wants to be called. Okay, but biggest laugh of the episode, like, can I still call you Jennifer? No, bitch. No, <laughs> no, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, lots of fun with that. We don't really do much with this character. Like, we're obviously setting it up for the end of the episode when this woman right. becomes a pawn and she's going to be collecting various items from the guards so that Tiffany can escape from prison. But uh, really, she's the initial hurdle. And then, of course, we also have special guest star Nia Vardalis as Evelyn Elliott, who is playing something of a Martha Stewart character. Yeah. Yes. Um, I so I saw her name in the credits and I was like, what? What is Nia Vardalos doing in this episode? Apart from the fact that she is a Canadian, so of course she's like locally based where they shoot. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I truthfully, and you're gonna think I'm so stupid for thinking this. I was like, okay, does Jennifer Tilly want out of this franchise and we're just gonna transfer our soul into Nia Vardalos and she's right. gonna be like the new Tiffany? Uh-huh. Um I mean, look, I want Jennifer Tilly to stay in this show always, but I, I, there are times where I'm like, I feel like she's so separate from everything else going on in the show that it doesn't feel mm-hmm. like that Mancini and co. always know what to do with Tiffany. So I hope that she gets brought back into the fold more. Nevertheless, um, as just an amusing cameo, I really like this Nia Vardalos stuff. <laughs> yeah, it, it was fun, and then it was over too soon, but mm-hmm. it's our big death scene, well, one of our big death scenes for the episode, uh, yeah. as we play marionette with this woman. 
which again i was like because we've never i guess well no we have seen voodoo dumb because the first child's play with the voodoo doll that was something that was then where chucky breaks the guy's leg but we oh. don't think we've seen voodoo dolls since then Mm-mm. yeah and of course we're using the voodoo for dummies book which makes sense because it's got multiple chapters in it. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, I do think Nia Vardalos is a good comedian, but mm-hmm. I'd never seen her really do like physical comedy like this before. And so yeah. I was really, and again, I, you're right. It's over too soon. I was like, oh, we're just done with Nia Vardalos. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but watching her dodge the knife as she's doing this cooking demonstration, I was honestly uncomfortable thinking about, oh, she's going to stab herself in the fucking eye or the face oh, no. or something. I kept thinking, there's a cop with a gun pointed at her. Why don't you just kneecap her or something? A hundred percent. As always, it's Chucky. You've got to suspend your disbelief because I thought the exact same thing. Like, what guard would just be standing there watching as this inmate Pays self-harms? Her. Pays- yeah. yeah. <laughs> but nevertheless, yeah. So Tiffany, uh, basically, but we haven't seen it yet, but she will escape p- prison because she uh, voodoos the guard and... Mm-hmm she's gonna voodoo all the other guards that are guarding the, the six guards that are guarding the exit including one yep. sniper and um <laughs> she'll be out part of me kind of hopes that we don't belabor this point and it just becomes a fun heisty montage kind of like the opening credits where we're going through the security layout of the white house like i kind of want to see that when we come back and it's just like here's her marionetting these six different people and then she's just out of jail well, and I get that she's just a, just a special guest star, but I feel like all three seasons have followed this trajectory where we keep everything so separate, and then the last mm-hmm. like two ish episodes we bring everyone together. Right, it's fine. It's I fine. guess I do kind of want to see a season where we have hey everyone in the fold, but I guess when you have like thirty different plot lines going on, that does make it a little difficult. Hmm. Yeah, even the season one finale, right, where it ended on that cliffhanger where it's the Tiffany doll and then Alex Vincent driving off in the truck and we thought oh maybe these two are gonna have to spend some time together and it's like no not really no (laughs) we just drive off a cliff but it's fine at the very least the show is never boring or it doesn't feel pacey in that way because we're always moving shit along Um, truly yeah yeah so moving on to our kids then and the white house party um Mm -hmm. what what do you think okay so I I appreciate that we acknowledge that they don't have much of a plan because (laughs) it seems pretty evident as they're making the way in. It's like, wait, what are you going to do? You're going to film Chucky being alive and somehow live stream that. Of course, we're referencing things like deep fakes, but um, I don't know. I, I think part of my, not frustration, but the thing that I was hoping for is that we would see more elaborate costumes and we would spend more time oh. with the Halloween party. And maybe there's a bunch of Easter eggs that I missed in this. I think some of the costumes are probably going to be more significant when people can pause and, and rewatch and that kind of thing. But I will say I appreciated that all three of our trio are dressed in various stages of good guy dolls. Oh, see, for me, it was all the Phantom of the Opera stuff. I was like, of course, Chucky's Phantom of the Opera. But I didn't mm-hmm. think we were going to get a chandelier. So the first time we see that chandelier, I was like, oh, we're, right. doing, we're doing Phantom of the Opera. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it took me forever to figure that out, in, in part because I was trying to figure out exactly what his costume was. Like, it didn't click for me immediately. Really? Yeah, I I saw the mask, but I didn't realize like, oh, the cape. I think it's because I expected half a face as opposed to a full mask. Right, right, right. Um, I guess the the extra thing this episode though is Sarah Sarah Sherman, Sarah Sherman's nanny Annie. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. So I I didn't know this because I haven't watched SNL in years, but I didn't know that Sarah Sherman plays Chucky on SNL parodies of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you've been name dropping her all season, teasing her arrival. And I confess, I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. I didn't know who she was. Okay, this is a total like personal aside for me. So I I didn't know who she was because I don't watch SNL, but I Mm -hmm. went to um, a stand up comedy show last year with three female comedians. And it was Megan Stalter from Hacks and Patty Harrison from um, I Think You Should Leave and Sarah Sherman. And she was the one I didn't know. Okay. Um, I will say she's very funny. Uh, she's clearly only in this episode because of that whole relationship. Yeah. But it, it's it's cute. She has nothing to do but show up and be nice to Henry for a bit, and then get her face sliced off somehow by the chandelier. But yeah. See again, that I think is part of the slightness, you know. And and maybe I will have this proven wrong, and we'll come back, and there will be like a Halloween part two mm-hmm. as episode five. But 
part of me was like, okay, so we're just introducing this character to kill her. And it feels like if you don't understand her significance from oh, yeah. the personal connection, it's just like, well, what is this character? Why are we bringing her in? And those are the kinds of things where it feels like an Easter egg that is unnecessary. And I think it actually slows things down because we could have been spending more time on other aspects in this episode. Yeah, no, I, I I agree. It's still fun to watch, but yeah, like in terms of like narrative momentum, there's not really a lot being done here. We mm-hmm. are trying to do more with these pre- the president and his wife though, because uh, Devin Sawa spends half the episode chasing either Chucky or a hallucination. I couldn't really tell what it was half the time. I think it's meant to be half and half. Like definitely the second time we see it when he's in the ballroom with everyone, that to me was definitely Chucky. But the earlier part, the first time, definitely seemed more like, oh, it's his grief because of course it's the one year anniversary since Joseph Mm -hmm. died. And we're throwing this whole benefit in his honor because he loved Halloween and all these other things. It's interesting i'm not quite sure where we're gonna go with this i did think we were gonna kill devon sawa here so i was kind I of glad too. that we did i i thought because anytime someone does this yeah <laughs> you're just like all right you're waiting for it you're waiting for it so I, I appreciate the restraint there but also because i mean like i mean to kill the president like i feel like we're gonna be out of the white house then so like that has to be safe for the late the end of the I, although i really hope that devon sawa's character doesn't die this season yeah it just feels like it would be too well it would be too big an incident i feel like these kids getting connected to the death of a sitting president would be fucking massive yeah yeah we could kill the kids but But, i don't think we can kill the parents (laughs) but what i hope for future seasons though is that like so let's keep devon sawa alive maybe we don't keep this president as like a main character for the show but like maybe Mm -hmm. in future seasons we just see like um uh, addresses on a tv or something (laughs) yeah 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 that would be fun i think we're still gonna lose the first lady at some point but again I like you oh, i'm hoping it's until later that, okay, th- that that is the subplot that's kind of kind of like okay like do something with this please it's her with gil bellows we have that one scene with them where he's mm-hmm. like blackmailing her for whatever and she's not happy and i'm like okay and maybe this i mean i'm sorry this clearly will lead somewhere in the back sure. half of the season but mm-hmm. right now we just have that one scene and it's kind of like okay should i care about this right now <laughs> question for you did you get a weird sexy vibe from the two of them um i mean if only because their fight seemed very uh uh flared up but i didn't really think about it until you mentioned it so no but i'm okay. not i'm not shutting you down yeah it it almost seemed to me like there was going to be a weird reveal that the reason that he trusts her over her husband not just because of the transparency thing but I thought we were going to do a weird reveal that they used to date or something unusual. I mean, we might. We, we might. might be heading there. Although I had to go back and watch the episode where he's introduced because I don't remember seeing like a moment of familiar, a look of familiarity between them. Right. What did work for me though is the bonding between Lexi and Grant. Um, mm-hmm. Although I will be okay if I never hear Don't Fear the Reaper in any piece of media ever again. I know. <laughs> it, it was one of those needle drops where I just thought, no, everybody has done this, please. It's entirely possible that this franchise has done it before, and maybe that's mm. the reference. But as soon as she, she was like, oh, I love Blue Oyster Cult. And I'm like, she's like, this is my favorite song. And I was like, if you play fucking Don't Fear the Reaper. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it was also, some deep cut. <laughs> also, some like 16-year-old, 17-year-old saying, my favorite band, I love this song. Like, Come on. which Come on. given what we know about lexi that doesn't seem like Mm-mm. something she would actually but you know what whatever character it's nevertheless fine. It's fine. outside of that i did like her moments with grant 100 percent. and again i do think that that's maybe where some of my again like gentle frustrations yeah. with these episodes is coming from is that these emotional moments are landing really really well for me and then the ridiculousness of some of these deaths which as we've said are so over the top and gory i'm loving both of those polarities but it's kind of like the middle stuff like well, so much of this episode is like let's go into this room and nothing happens let's have chucky do something but it doesn't really seem to matter all that much like i think i just want more of the moments that really land i think i i don't even disagree with you um, i do think at the end of the day because this is a franchise that has spanned like the entire spectrum of tone from mm-hmm. serious horror to comedy and the show is trying to do all of that all of it which admittedly yeah. is a very tough task i think for the most part it balances it very well but again like uh, uh, uh there are things where like 
Oh God, the report, the nosy reporter from the premiere who gets cut in half and takes us. Right? I was like, oh, we're just done with her, I guess. She's done. She's done. <laughs> it, it does feel like back half of the franchise Chucky, right? Where people are introduced and they just die horribly a couple of minutes later and you think, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, you're done. You're over with. I do think there's still a potential that that character is going to end up having some sort of impact on the narrative but yeah I was also surprised that it's like oh hey lady we haven't seen you in a while but now you're back to die it's kind of interesting and this isn't even me excusing it but more so how I'm viewing the show so Mm -hmm. you know how like um Adam Sandler has all those like shitty Netflix movies that he does yep um and most time they're not good per se although I will die on the hill if you be Halloween but the critique always is he just got a bunch of his friends together for a weekend to go right. hang out and film stuff. And it's not a movie, it's just all them having fun. Mm-hmm. The success of the films depends on if we were having fun with them too. And yeah. I do get that vibe from this show quite often. I am having fun with it, so I'm able mm-hmm. to overlook it. And again, trusting like, well, this is probably going to go somewhere. But it's right. so dumb <laughs> that I just kind of don't care. <laughs> yeah, dumb in the right ways if it's landing for you and... I, I do think what ends up happening almost every year is I make these critiques and you're, you are more fine with them. And then by the end of the season, I usually end up coming around. But it's not even that I'm just missing your critiques. It, it, you it's, it's 100% and it doesn't bother me situation. If only, exactly. And maybe it's because I'm not putting Chucky on this pedestal of quality of like, oh, like it's like this is cinema or television mm-hmm. um, and not that you're doing that too. But um, I guess I, I'm just kind of like a lot more, more along for the ride. Right. which is not really what a critic should be doing but <laughs> i mean are we really doing criticism here no. i think part of this is we're we're watching the episodes we're talking about our immediate reactions to them and then sometimes we wrap it up with a nice bow at the end of the season but yeah i mean chucky is one of those shows where so much of the time it just feels completely different to everything else on tv because it is a show that often just feels pure escapism yeah Absolutely. But um, I mean, nevertheless, uh, I, I'm really excited to see where we go. I mean, the writer, the writer strike is over. The actor strike is not. So at mm-hmm. least we know they can start writing the next four episodes. Um, yes. I, I don't see production happening until 2024. <laughs> yeah yeah we don't actually know how far they got if they had managed to shoot additional scenes if they're Mm -hmm. able to start putting together some of these edits but uh so far the word is mum on when we might see the back half of the season but you're right it's not going to be this year honestly because i'm i was hoping oh maybe they'll go for like march or summer but like but then i was like oh but what if they just wait for next halloween and it's like just part one part two I don't know. Ooh, I think we'll see it in the spring if we can get the strike resolved like in the next couple of months. But again, it's like television is something where each episode is taking you almost a week and then you've got to edit it. Chucky is a show that requires a lot of additional hands because FX. of the puppeteering, yeah. the FX and so on. So and actually, maybe before we close out, do you want to talk a little bit about any of the FX with the murders in the chandelier here? Sarah Sherman's face falling off looked bad, but it was it was fun. Like it, it looked was very fun. cartoonish. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, all the other bodies under the chandelier, um, I thought that was great. It was very ghost shippy. Mm, yes, that's actually what I thought too. Yeah, I I think initially when the chandelier was falling, I thought that Chucky had outfitted it with knives, so we were gonna see them falling. Ooh, um, that would have been cool. Yeah, I was a little disappointed but, that that wasn't wait, it, but it's fine. But but there is the shot though, like as it's kind of after the bolt falls and it's swinging, and you see all the little like um mm-hmm. whatever hangs from the chandelier, like they're kind of like swaying. I thought that yes. looked really cool. It did. It looked really good. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, but yeah, any other thoughts before we close this out? Uh, the dirty old man in me was like, I know we've talked about uh, Zach- <laughs> Zachary <laughs> Arthur, but like, how fucking gay was it that he was, of course, like a cowboy who was wearing sleeveless, sli- just showing I, off I, the guns. I don't know if that was is that is Arthur's decision to be like, hey, can you please have me as sleeveless as possible this season? Or right. if someone on set is a perv and is like, we're going to make you sleeveless all season. <laughs> Yeah, it it was just very funny where I was like, oh, he's embracing the gay attitude towards Halloween where it's like you're basically showing up in sexy whatever. Well, once he's of age, it'll just be underwear. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what we do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, everyone. Well, that has been see the mid-season finale, Dressed to Kill, of Chucky. Let us know what you thought. Are, uh, where, where do you think we're heading in the back half of the season whenever we get it? And uh, mm-hmm. what did you think about uh, how this all, I was going to say, tied up together, but we didn't really tie anything up here. 
Yeah, yeah. Do you think that Chucky is going to die as he dramatically declares at the end of the episode? Yes, I like that we actually got to see his face. And of course, he was old looking and that was very fun. It was fun. It was fun. It's not like the biggest like end of season or mid season reveal, but it's yeah. All right. Well, I guess uh, on that note, we can cross out Dress to Kill. Indeed. And cross out Chucky Queers. (laughs) 